What's up, everybody, listeners of the podcast for the universe? Thank you so much for all your love and support. You guys have done it. You've gone out and subscribed on iTunes. You've shared the show like we challenge you to every time. We really, really appreciate it. Remember, each and every episode of the podcast is available at energyislovepodcast.com. You can keep up to date with all the things that we're doing there. We also have links on the website to all of our social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can go to our YouTube channel. All that good stuff is on the website, energyislovepodcast.com. On the website, you'll also find a tab highlighting my wife and I. We are evolution coaches. We help people in the process of going from where they're at to maybe where they want to be. We believe that everybody is in a constant state of evolution. It's taking place right now. And the idea is you have to embrace it. You have to bring awareness to it. You have to bring awareness to where you aren't evolving, maybe, where you might be stuck. And we can help you do that, help you see your life more clearly, and then aid you in the most genuine and true way so that you can live your life in the fullest, most amazing, beautiful way, and in every aspect. You can contact us either through the website for the podcast. You can go to our Facebook page, Evolution Coaches. So get a hold of us, please, so that we can help you in some way, shape, or form expand and grow. Really just live the fullest life imaginable. Coming up next month, I guess it would be next month, coming up November 5th, we are going to be recording live again with the podcast at the Law of Attraction Summit. It's put on by Quantum NLP. Christiana Turner was on an earlier episode of the podcast. Right now it's eluding me which one it was, but you can go back and find her episode, learn all about her, learn about the Law of Attraction, which is something that we talk about on the show quite frequently with our guests. So we're going to be at the Law of Attraction Summit November 5th recording with the podcast, bringing you all of the speakers and guests and everybody that are going to be there and highlighting all of that stuff. So it's going to be a wonderful opportunity. Go online, check them out. You can go to quantumnlp.net or you can also go to their Facebook page. This episode of the podcast, each and every episode of the podcast is brought to you by Crystal Water Float Spa located in Twilla, Utah. Go online to crystalwaterfloat.com, learn all about what they do and what they offer. It's a beautiful, amazing place to float. If you live in the area, come hop in one of the tanks. Go check out their Facebook page. They have tons of information and articles and links to the benefits of floating. If you're a fan of the podcast, you know that we highlight floating and we believe in it greatly. And at Crystal Water Float Spa, you get to lay back and enjoy the benefits of floating. So check them out. Crystal Water Float is also the nation's only distributor of the amazing Dream Pod. Dream Pods are beautiful tanks to float in. They're incredibly high-end, aesthetically magnificent, user-friendly, easy maintenance, wonderful tank to float in. So if you're looking to open up your own float center and maybe you're the type of person that can put a tank in your house, that's awesome. One day I'll have a tank in my house. But check out the Dream Pod. You can go to dream-pod.com and learn more all about the tanks. They have the Dream Pod Mini or the flagship V2. So go find out more about the Dream Pod and then contact Crystal Water Float Spa today to learn how you can get your pod shipped out to you. The best customer service in the industry. So go check them out, guys. Dream-pod.com, crystalwaterfloat.com. My guest today on the episode, the episode you're about to listen to, is Shelsey Jarvis. Shelsey is the owner of leftbrainedhippie.com. You can go check her out there. You can also go to her Facebook page, Left Brained Hippie. We've got links for it in the show notes. And what Chelsea does, she helps women who are online entrepreneurs be grounded in their spirituality, beat the overwhelming aspects of that environment and that business, cut through their self-doubt, and see more traction in their business and in their life, really. So it was a wonderful episode. Chelsea's up in Montreal, Canada. So this is one of those episodes that we did online. As always, you know that we do the best that we can with the audio quality, and this is no different. But I loved getting to know her. I loved getting to speak with her and learn not only about what she does, but how she works with people and works with clients, incorporating a lot of manifestation techniques, the law of attraction, all those type of things, and helping people go from where they're at to where they want to be. It was a lot of fun. Great episode. You're going to sit back, you're going to relax, and you're going to enjoy the podcast for the universe with my wonderful guest, Chelsea Jarvis. Here we go. You're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is the love podcast. The Energy is Love podcast. Energy is love. The Energy is Love podcast. The podcast for the universe. The Energy is Love podcast. Chelsea 
Jarvis from Montreal, Canada. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. So I was really excited when you reached out to be a guest on the show. And I go in and I research and I look at all your stuff and all the you know information essentially that you have out there online and on Facebook. And I'm excited because you've got a lot of really cool stuff. So let's dive right in and talk about the left-brained hippie. Awesome. Okay. First and foremost, I want to know how you came up with that name. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'll tell you because I've been dipping my toes in this, you know, the spiritual pool for the last, you know, I'm, I'm relatively new to this in comparison to a lot of people. It's been, uh, you know, the last year or two. And my biggest issue when I first started was, you know, I'd be told, set your intentions, align yourself with the universe. And I'm like, what What does that even mean? Like, I, don't, I didn't know. I didn't understand. I was like, give me the step by step. And I just, I felt like there was a lack of step by step left brain, so to speak, information out there on all, you know, all of the spiritual stuff. I love it so much, but um, I feel like a lot of the quote unquote gurus speak to people who already know about this stuff and aren't really catering to the people who are just starting, who need a little bit more handholding and instruction, like tell me what to actually do. <laughs> so I came, you know, like align yourself with the universe. I mean, now I get what it means, but I don't, I didn't know what that meant in the beginning. And I really need to be like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Yeah. It's <laughs> so pretty then, out there when you start yeah. getting into the teachings and all the different aspects and the belief systems. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> a lot of it is just that feel, that connection. And you're like, that's wonderful. I want to be there, but how the hell do I get there? Exactly. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. <laughs> how did you come to it? Like you say, you haven't necessarily been in the realm of spirituality or kind of, you know what I mean, your whole life or anything like that. Did you have some experience in your life where, you know, it was a life altering thing or how did you exactly kind of get into this stuff? Well, it's funny because I grew up in a Christian household um, Catholic to be more specific. And then I, when I moved out of the house, I rebelled against it and went completely atheist. And now I've found, you know, my ha happy medium where I'm, you know, I no longer believe in organized religion. However, I am very, I consider myself very spiritual. Um, so I have found that there's, you know, a higher being and, um, you know, a creator of sorts, but I don't call it God anymore. And the, the way I kind of, came into this was I have been an entrepreneur for about seven years in different businesses. And of course, part of being an entrepreneur is reading personal development. That's just how you make your way in the entrepreneurial world. And one of the books that I read uh, recommended The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. And that was the first time I ever considered the fact that, um, you know, your thoughts create your reality. And that was really my initiation. So I read that book and I was just like, okay, this is great. I believe it works, but I still don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I just kept digging and digging from there. And, you know, all the time I'm discovering um, all of these amazing things about energy and about chakras and about, you know, how our thoughts literally are creating everything around us. And it's just incredibly it, it amazes me more and more every day yeah it's pretty fascinating stuff yeah what do you think somebody from you know from your perspective and it's a wonderful thing because one of the things we like to do with the podcast is you talked earlier where a lot of times gurus i guess we can call them that are teaching or connecting or reaching out to people who are already in that space of kind of believing or knowing or participating in spirituality in some way shape or form Mm -hmm. And with the podcast, we like to reach the people who aren't. We like to, con you know, my whole purpose behind it is spreading awareness in regards to a whole bunch of these different aspects of thinking and moving and living. But I like the idea that there's somebody out there who may not necessarily know what a chakra is and who may not yes. be open to the <laughs> cosmic universal flow of energy stuff. And they're interested. They just don't have a place to go for information. So specifically you, like, how did you go from... Being Catholic, growing up that way, having a very dogmatic, I guess, belief system, not that there's anything wrong with Catholicism, I'm not saying that, but mm -hmm. one that's so ingrained in, you know, structure and the ways that things are to this space where it's really not, where it's so individualized to the, to the person. Like, how was that transition for you? Was it difficult? Was it hard? 
Well, I, I, I guess on a certain level, I always rebelled a little bit against my religion because, um, I mean, growing up, I mean, it's not fun for a kid to go sit there in church and stand up and sit down and like, <laughs> it's, it's not really fun for a kid. So I didn't, it's not something that I grow, grew up enjoying necessarily, but it was just how it was, you know, in our family, I had very, very Catholic grandparents. Um, you know, my parents weren't quite so strict on it. You know, there, there's a lot of things that a lot of, you know, old school Catholics would consider very, uh, you know, would consider no, nos, yeah. <laughs> but you know, my family was okay with it. Like it's, it's not like I wasn't allowed to live with a boyfriend until we got married or anything like that. It wasn't that strict. Um, however, you know, at some point I just kind of, I, I, I started actually listening to the story. I was just like the, the Bible. I, I, I didn't connect with it at all. I was just actually sort of hearing the story for the first time. And I'm like, this sounds absurd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm an adult now. I'm a, I'm a capable of thinking critically for myself. And I'm like, I don't connect with this at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this just sounds ridiculous. And, you know, not to smash anybody as other belief, because I do know Catholics who truly are, you know, really pure hearted individuals and use religion for, they use it in the best way possible, which is to promote peace and love. And I have all the respect in the world for that. But I didn't connect with organized religion anymore. And I rebelled and went in the complete opposite direction, which was, I was an atheist for many years. I just believed we're all crawling on this planet like ants and everything is random. Nothing is, you know, there's no such thing as, um, you know, everything happens for a reason. I didn't See, believe that's that. So interesting. Years. That's so interesting to me to think that you go from, you know, being brought up and raised with the concepts and idea around Christianity, uh, kind of go to the opposite end of the spectrum where mm -hmm. I'm going to not believe in any higher power that life is just simply life. And we go back to dirt and we're done. And now you're in this space where it's like, well, there is more out there. Yeah. That's so interesting. Yeah. And it's funny because I, <laughs> I remember I said to my mom at one point when I was in my atheist period and I said, you know what? I don't, I don't, I don't think I believe in this God stuff. And she said, don't you say that? So I said, <laughs> okay, so I'm not discussing religion with my family anymore. That's, <laughs> That's I said, okay, that, you know, and I, I'm very close with my family, so I would never I would never start an argument just for that because I totally respect when other people have their beliefs as long as they don't push them on me. So I do the same for them. I don't push my beliefs on them. Which I think is very, very smart and very, very wise because in the end, I mean, I've run into that with this whole, the belief system I have now is so different than what it was when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. And when I would try to, in a sense, push it on people, not in a way of you have to think this way or believe this way, but just wanting to share with them some of these ideas and concepts. If you go too hard yeah. and if you push too hard, then they immediately... Well, it's hard because you get excited about them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, I've discovered this new thing. Like, you, 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 when you feel like you've discovered the meaning of life, you want to share it with people, you know? What's some of the stuff that you got excited about in the beginning in the process of learning? Oh, my goodness. I mean, I originally started it because I wanted to be more successful as an entrepreneur. So reading a book like The Science of Getting Rich, you know, it, it's telling you there's like a scientific method. Like if you, you know, if you think this way and you, you know, take these actions, then you can't not get rich. So I was like, okay, I, you know, I can get on board with this that I, you know, that there's some, you know, there's some energetic component here that I'm not understanding that I'm willing to learn more about this. So initially, yeah, it was, I want to make more money because I was broke. Like I was yeah. really, really broke. So that was how I started. And then the more books I read and, you know, the more blogs and podca podcasts and, um, you know, I even bought online courses to learn more about this. And the more I dug in, I realized I was like, this is not just about money. This is so far. Like, this is not just about money at all. Money is like one tiny, tiny little slice <laughs> of how my life can be improved by taking these concepts on board. For sure. On your on your Facebook page, The Left Brained Hippie, you write, Grounded spiritu spirituality to help female online entrepreneurs beat the overwhelm. I believe it's... Oh my goodness, now I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> Essentially, the self doubt. And I can't help you because I don't remember what it says, so <laughs> <laughs> I can't help you. <laughs> uh, the self, the self doubt, and see more traction in their business. So, helping people get through the self doubt, being more grounded, um, so that they can see, like you said, like you described, it's not just about money. 
that that's really just a really small piece of the pie, that there's so many more beneficial things to life in general. Mm -hmm. So how do you help people that way? How do you do that? Okay. Well, the reason why I'll start with the reason why I specifically want to help entrepreneurs and, you know, female entrepreneurs, online entrepreneurs, you know, I got really specific with that because, you know, that was where I was coming from. And I realized that there are some, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that they're the only people who experience these challenges, but I would say that they probably come out more. They probably come out in a stronger way. So things like, um, you know, being, putting yourself out there and being visible to the world, because if you want to succeed in an online business, you have to put yourself out there. And that's really scary because you are going to get some feedback from people that, you know, at some point, you know, there's going to be haters out there and (laughs) you, you, you can't really avoid that. If you're going to be an online business and you're going to be visible and have any level of success, there will be people out there who don't like it. And that's, it's really scary when you're starting and especially other things like, um, when you start earning money and it doesn't really feel like work, there can be a sense of guilt there. There can be a sense of, I'm not working hard enough to deserve this money and things like that. And there's a lot of limiting beliefs that need to be cleared in order to really kind of reach the next level. So that's why I really, really like, and especially us women, like we are guilty, like we are so experts at guilt. We are so good at making ourselves feel guilty for no good reason, like for things that most (laughs) men would never even think twice about, but we are like tearing ourselves up inside over it. And, you know, I, so I feel like that's, I totally relate to it, which is why I want to help other online entrepreneurial women, because there are some struggles that just, that are definitely, those struggles feel really real. And the good news is, is they're not, they're all in our heads and we can get rid of them. <laughs> For sure. Let's talk more about, um, cause you bring up the, the first thing that you kind of describe and talk about is that challenge of there's going to be people that view you in a certain way when you go out there online. And mm-hmm. it, I mean, the reality is it's not just an online presence or if you're an entrepreneur that's putting yourself out there in that space, it's everyday life. Everybody right. struggles with that aspect of, do you know what I mean? Whether they work some nine to five job and yeah. they go into work and things like that. I think there is going to be more of it when you put yourself out there online as an entrepreneur, just because you're reaching more people. So, I mean, if you reach 50 people a day in your daily life in a nine to five, I mean, you might be reaching thousands a day. So you, you get exponentially more haters (laughs) (laughs) and they're a lot less nervous to tell you what they think when they're behind a computer screen. I'll tell you that. That's for sure. So how do you teach like, cause that's such a hard thing that goes to the core of like the way that we think about ourselves, our self-esteem, self-love, mm-hmm. our self-worth. How do you help people in that process of realizing first and foremost, it doesn't matter what other people think. It doesn't matter how they're going to view you. Like, how do you help them through that process? Cause that's really honestly some of the really core issues that people struggle in is their self-worth. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, you know, I want to say a little disclaimer here. I'm not a therapist. So if somebody does have like deep issues, obviously I recommend going to see a therapist because there is only a limit to what a coach or, you know, an online figure can do for you. So when it comes to haters, when, when you see something online written about you or directed at you, or even sometimes it's not even directed at you, but maybe somebody else who you relate to. Um, you know, maybe another online entrepreneur is getting trashed and for some reason it triggers you. The first thing I always ask people is why is it triggering you? It doesn't matter if it's true or not. That doesn't matter because that is a reflection on them, what they said. But if it triggers you, it's because on some level, you know, maybe you believe it to be true within yourself or you fear that it might be true within yourself. Because if it, if there was no, like if you didn't believe there was an ounce of truth to it, then you would have brushed it off. It's like if someone was walking down the street, you know, and told you that your skin was purple, like you'd be like, well, that's not true. And you'd keep walking. (laughs) So, I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get all busted up over that because you know that it's not true. But if someone online says you're a fraud or something like that, and you know, if you on some level believe that that might be true in some way, that might bother you that that can tug at you. So, you know, I help my clients by really exploring why that bothered them and like trying to figure out if there was any past experiences where they can trace that back to, you know, when we do a lot of EFT, emotional freedom technique, which 
if in, in case somebody listening doesn't know what that is, it's basically, you know, tapping on your face and body on acupressure points. It's a much too big talk to- topic to explore fully right now, but <laughs> um, like it's that's the gist of it. You just kind of look like a crazy person tapping your face and body. And also forgiveness. We do a lot of forgiveness, you know, often on themselves, because often um, the the fears and the negative feelings that are triggered when we see haters like that, it's because we've made up these fears and limiting beliefs in our heads. So it just becomes a question of working on releasing them and, you know, trying to reprogram them basically into something that actually serves you. Yeah, that's the challenging part. Yeah. And it's not something that's going to happen instantly most of the time. Maybe if it's just um, a little belief or, you know, something that doesn't feel really strong or maybe if it's something that's just starting to crop up, then yeah, you could probably clear it pretty quickly. But if it's something that's been bothering you since you were a child, for example, like if you have, you know, abandonment issues or anything like that, that's been going on for decades, that's not something that you can just tap on your face a few times and magically <laughs> it goes away. Like it takes a lot more work than that for sure. <laughs> that's a good idea though. I mean, that's a, you know, idealistic way. I'll just tap on my face a few times and this problem is solved. <laughs> I know. And it, EFT is great. It has helped me clear so many limiting beliefs, but it's not a magic wand if you really do have some, you know, deep, deeply seated issues. Like my childhood, I'm happy to say it was very normal. Like I, I wasn't abused. I wasn't homeless. Like I, I, I had a very good childhood. So I recognize, and I, you know, I'm fully aware that there are people who have really, really, um, strong issues that they need to deal with. And I mean, I'm not the person who can help them deal with those types of issues. So, I mean, I help people who, um, I'm not going to say that I only help people who had good childhoods, but people who need healing from particularly difficult childhoods, I wouldn't be the person to help them. But yeah. if some, for someone who's just looking to make progress going forward and isn't necessarily looking to dig up their entire past, that's where I can help. So do you feel like we're going to get a little, not necessarily crazy personal, but do you feel like in regards to your life and in regards to your childhood, because, um, that's kind of what we do. Like when I say we, my wife and I, we help people with the really shitty stuff, the stuff that mm-hmm. is from their childhood that's holding them back, that's getting the, you know, all those really difficult things to transition and move out of. You say that you had a pretty good childhood. You had a pretty good life. You didn't go through a whole lot of trauma or abuse or, you know, mm-hmm. but I always think even regardless of somebody that would have, you know, an ideal childhood or an ideal upbringing where they feel like they maybe not have had or didn't have some terrible experiences, um, I think even in those aspects, there's still little things that linger. Those still little things that kind oh, of yeah. pop up. Oh, every, yeah. And... Every parent fucks up their kid in some way or another. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do you have children yet? I do. I have two children, and I'm just doing my best not to screw them up too badly. Yeah. It's frustrating, <laughs> isn't it? Well, I really do feel that I have an advantage, you know, being so okay. aware of, you know, what goes on spiritually, you know, and I'm not saying that I know everything. I'm just saying that I'm more aware than the average person of, you know, the effect that it can have on their energy and their limiting beliefs. You know, I'm aware that if I, if I'm constantly saying the words, I can't afford that around my kids, then they will grow up with that belief that, you know, money is a limited resource and you have to hang on to it and you can't spend it. And, you know, they would grow up with certain beliefs that, you know, let's face it, most people grow up with the belief that they can't afford things. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'm very aware of my words when I'm talking about money and relationships and, you know, I'm, I'm just much more aware of this than I would have been um, if I was not exploring all the spiritual stuff. Well, that's a good thing. And like you said, words, I mean, that drives, you know, goes right into the core of like manifestation and the way that we not just verbalize things to the universe, but also within ourselves. Mm-hmm. because those words have such power and such vibration and such energy behind them. Absolutely. Is that one of those things that you kind of work people through that mindset of? Because, I mean, the reality is our self-talk, the way that we communicate with ourselves inside of our own brains, typically, and not with everybody out there, but the vast majority of people that we come into contact with, it's relatively negative. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the first thing that I usually have my clients do is I have a long list of just 
sent just phrases like um, that might that I have them evaluate on a scale of one to 10, how much they believe it, how strongly it resonates with them. And so that kind of allows me to get a starting point on where their limiting beliefs might be hiding. So, you know, something like um, uh, let, let me give an example. Um, the one percent, uh, you know, the richest one percent hogs all the resources. That might be one <laughs> limiting belief. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I have a client who strongly resonated with that and she didn't realize how, you know, she didn't realize how badly it was limiting her. But, uh, you know, another one, like if I like I can't afford to take time off, that's another one. And, you know, the, the worst thing about these is it feels real. It feels like rock solid truth. Yeah. So people are like, my bank account is in the negative. Like my, my credit cards are maxed out. I literally can't afford things. So, I mean, I like I totally get how real it feels. Um, but that's where I started, just figuring out what the stories are in their head. And that gives me a starting point where we can start digging up. OK, so let's figure out where these beliefs came from. Like, how did your parents talk about money when you were younger? And, you know, what did they do? And what was their attitude toward their job? And, you know, when you when you asked for, to if you, when you asked them to buy you something, what was their answer typically? Like this, these can give some really strong insights, you know, as, as usually as they start talking about it, they sort of come to certain real, realizations by themselves. And they're like, oh, <laughs> okay. I didn't realize that the, that was the story circling inside my head. Yeah. You know, if a client, you know, I have one client, her mother, um, whenever she would ask her to buy something, um, her mother would say, you know, just, uh, you're so, you cost me so much money or, you, you know, you are an expensive child or things like that. And I mean, when you think about that, hearing that over and over and over, you know, that sense of exasperation and, oh my God, you're costing me so much money. That can really leave an imprint on a child in, in the sense of their self-worth. You know, they might think, well, you know, my mom doesn't feel like I'm worth this, which is not true. <laughs> I mean, that's, I'm sure that's not what her mother was actually thinking, but in the eyes of a child who's witnessing this, you know, that's the story that they see. They're like, Oh, you know, I, I asked for something and that was the response I got. So that must mean that I'm not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That's and a good point. It's kind of scary when you're a parent because you just know how these things are, you know, being absorbed by kids, but <laughs> you know, it's really terrifying. Now, that's how I respond to my kids typically because it's, I mean, every week it's something different. It's, we need money for this. We need money for that. And it's just like, really? <laughs> well, that's wonderful. That's great. And you keep wanting them My kids hand. aren't old enough yet. They they don't ask for a lot of money stuff. And usually when my son does ask for something, it's like food. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's four years old and he just really, really loves food. So <laughs> That's a little bit easier to give in on that one. Yeah, exactly. It's not something that's going to cost me thousands of dollars. It's and, you know, it's not like I have to give in every time. I just say, no, we're not having that tonight. We're having this instead. <laughs> so it's really easy at this point, but I recognize that it's probably not always going to be that simple. <laughs> yeah, it changes. That's for sure. It makes you, yeah. it makes you a better parent. It makes you more yes. aware and, you know, patient with yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I think that's a good point. I think that the way that you describe it and the way you talk about it, because initially so much change that needs to take place within our own psyche and our own kind of frame of mindset i guess mm -hmm. um awareness is the first thing like we always tell people that that's and that's been huge for me is i can't fix or change or evolve out of some space if i'm not aware of what that space really is exactly yeah no um like if, if i were to just give people a bunch of affirmations to start to start saying that's like that's not going to work <laughs> because if i give them an affirmation let's say you know I earned $10,000 this month, let's say. If I give that affirmation to somebody who is earning like $500 a month, they'll say that and the immediate response in their head will be, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just going to activate all of that negative chatter. It's going to do the exact opposite of what they actually were intending. So you have to figure out what the stories are first. You clear them and then you start replacing them with, you know, the positive affirmations and, you know, all of the, the, positive rewiring of your brain but none of that will work unless you get to the beliefs first and clear them for sure so when we were setting up the interview and messaging back and forth trying to arrange everything um you mentioned that you're in the process of 
uh, becoming Reiki, uh, Reiki certified practitioner, right? I haven't actually started yet because I have so many online courses that I'm doing at the moment. I'm kind of a junkie, <laughs> but, uh, cause I'm, I'm doing, um, I'm working on my coaching certification right now. So technically I'm a coach student. And, uh, so one is, once that is done, then I will be able to maybe take something else out on my plate. I want to ask you about that. So that whole concept and idea that we need a certification in order to be a coach or we need a certification in order to be a Reiki practitioner or do you know what I mean? There's so many you don't. certifications <laughs> out there that you have to get in order to become something. And I absolutely despise that. It's it's like a catch-22 because I understand the the aspect of you need legitimacy, especially in the online business world where do you know what I mean? Anybody with Where a anybody computer, and everybody can yeah, yeah. <laughs> can pop up and say they're this or say they're that. So I understand mm -hmm. that aspect of it, but I think it plays into our limiting beliefs of absolutely until you get that certificate or until you've taken that course. And it's not even online stuff, right? I mean, it, it equates to the bigger thing where you know you don't have value behind yourself unless you've graduated from college and you have an associates in this or that or whatever. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. like <sighs> that part just completely like gives me a brain cramp. I, I don't understand how to break for, for me personally. I don't okay. stay when in it, but I don't prescribe to the idea that you have to have a coaching certification at all. And I'm not doing it necessarily to be more legitimate, quote unquote, because actually um, the course that I'm taking right now only earns a certain amount of credits toward ICF, International Coaching Federation. And I don't even know that I'll go for the rest of the credits. The reason that I'm doing it is mainly because I really do want to, I want, it's going to teach me how to be a better coach. Like I'm, I, it's going to help me, um, really fine tune my skills. So I think I was a pretty, I'm, I think I'm already a pretty damn good coach. You know, my, my clients get results. They, you know, my clients, it's not uncommon for them to have aha moments within the first 10 minutes of our first call. So I believe in my abilities as a coach. Um, but I, I am really a course junkie and I do love the idea of just fine tuning my skills and taking it to the next level. Cause I don't like to stay stagnant. Yeah. Just that seek, seeker of knowledge, I think is probably yeah, a good way very to look much, at it. very much. Yeah. I would love to be able to break free, not me personally, but society as a whole to break free from that concept or idea that, you know, unless somebody has some sort of degree or certification or something behind them, then, then and only then are they a legitimate at what they're proclaiming that they do. Well, I mean, I, I want a surgeon to like still have their certifications. <laughs> like I, I feel like there are still some, you know, some domains where I would really like them to go through their 12 years of school or whatever it is before they, <laughs> before they cut me open. Yeah. But even so, if like, even if we think about like back in the day, you know, uh, yeah, and I'm talking like way back in the day, granted times have changed so significantly, but a lot of times experience is so much more beneficial than actual, um, do you know what I mean? I would rather have the surgeon who spent you know, 15, 20 years actually doing whatever procedure it is that he's doing, regardless of whether or not he was taught technically, you know, I don't know. It, Me too. Uh, I just wouldn't want to be the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come to me after the 15 years. Yeah, exactly. You come to me after 15 years of experience. We got no problem. <laughs> what, um, what drew you to Reiki? Well, um, I started kind of just I started hearing about it. I have a friend in, um, in New York who is a Reiki practitioner and, you know, she talked about doing it on herself and she was just raving about it. And I thought, you know what, this is something I need, I need to try. I just want to see how it feels, see if I feel a difference. And, you know, I went to my first session, like fairly recently, just like a couple months ago and I loved it. I was like, this is amazing. I felt like a million bucks afterward. And like, I just, I felt light. I felt like I could take on the world. Um, and I, the, just the experience itself. Um, like I, I literally felt like someone was rubbing my third eye and the, the lady was down at my feet. Like she wasn't touching my head, but <laughs> I, I literally felt like someone was massaging my third eye. It was the trippiest thing. And, you know, just sensations of like, at one point it felt like my legs were being gently pulled down. And at one point it felt like I was, my torso was being kind of pushed into an upright position slightly, like just, you know, the lady doesn't even touch you and you you have all these sensations and, you know, those sensations are obviously relative to how your 
energy is and how it needs to be balanced. And I don't even fully understand it yet, but I just, I really, it was something that I really connected with. And, you know, I try to go at least once a month. Had you ever experienced anything like that before? No. Um, the closest I'd come was during meditation. Um, you know, if I, I find it does take me still a good 10 minutes to kind of get in the zone meditating. But, um, sometimes when I really get deep into the zone, it actually, the first time I remember vividly, it felt like I was flying over water and that was just, it felt like I had wind on my face and I was just flying and it was incredible. And that was when I really got hooked on meditation as well. <laughs> yeah. It is incredible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, <Yeah. laughs> I, for me, meditation, uh, changed so many different aspects of it. Uh, yeah. not just my own personal life and things like that, but, um, I think, cause I'm going to challenge you a little bit. I always, I always feel bad when I tell guests that, that I'm going to challenge and they think, well, shit, <laughs> I came on this podcast and this asshole's sitting here. <laughs> um, I think the fact is, so you experienced Reiki, right? Yep. And it's, it's breaks it down. It's just a really simple form of movement of energy, somebody yep. holding space and moving energy within your own body. And yes, that's something that you can do for yourself. That's something that you can do all the time. Um, and the fact that you experience some form of that in a little bit of meditation, um, it's like anything else in life. It's just practice. So the more that you practice that, and it's not even through meditation, but the fact is you can, do you know what I mean? You don't have to go through some Reiki certification in order to move energy within your own space and within your own body. Yeah. It's not about the certification. It's just the fact that I, I don't know how to do it. And <laughs> so I just want to take a course to learn how to do it. I don't, uh. I don't really plan on opening a Reiki practice anytime soon, so I don't really care about the certification. Do you think, could you see yourself at some point trying to incorporate it more into working with clients in some way, shape, or form? Eh, no, probably not. <laughs> no, because I'm not interested in maintaining a service-based business forever. Um, I really love it for now, but there are certain aspects of it that are a little bit more limiting that I would like for the long term. So, you know, I do plan to transition to more of an online course business. Um, you know, I do have one little mini course right now, but, you know, I will be creating a full online course. Uh, and that's going to be what I transition to eventually. But I really do like doing the one-on-one -on -one for now. Yeah. Well, I'm going to give you a little, a little technique, a little something that you can do to practice uh, okay. kind of playing with your own energy. So you don't have to do it right now. You can do it right now. It might sound a little strange on the on the podcast, but initially what you'll do is you'll, you know, find a quiet space, time, whatever that, you know, just clear your mind so that you're in that moment, so that you're really present. And then you'll start by just clapping your hands together and then you'll rub them together and kind of move your hands back and forth so that you can feel the heat kind of build up in your hands between the friction and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's not like you have to go crazy like you're trying to start a fire or anything like that. It's simply just moving your hands back and forth, rubbing them together, circling them around, and then slowly spread your hands apart. And you'll do it slowly. And what will happen is you'll feel the energy between your hands even after your hands have separated. And oh, if you cool. go slowly, you can feel it kind of move and mold and shift and change in a sense. It's kind of hard to explain because it's out there, right? But you can slowly expand your hands outwards to almost where you kind of create a ball or an orb or whatever you want to call it. Uh, That's so cool. I'm definitely them. trying that after. <laughs> yeah. And you'll have that space between your hands and you'll have that energy. And then once you kind of get to that point where you feel like maybe your hands are too far apart or you're reaching that breaking point, um, then you can make it small again and bring it back in. And once you get to that fill and get that sensation where you can literally fill the energy between your hands, then you can move that energy from your hands into any part of your body. So you could focus that intention into your heart or into your third eye or your oh, crown or cool. whatever the case may be. And then you'll feel that sensation of that energy going from your hands into those different areas of your body. I am totally doing that after. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's just a fun way to yeah. practice and play with energy and kind of be conscious of, do you know what I mean? The reality is we all have it and we all can do it and we can all, you know, manipulate it. I hate that word because it comes with such a negative connotation. It's, it comes with a negative connotation, but I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just playing with energy. Well, it's funny because I have, um, I, I spoke to a client the other day who, um, who actually is a Reiki practitioner. Um, she's going to be training to be a Reiki master. And she, I asked her like how her, we were talking about how her family, 
and you know how everybody around her think what what they think about about her doing Reiki. And she said her husband is really on board with it. So he at one point was talking to one of his clients. He wanted to recommend one of his clients to her to go have a Reiki session. And so he said to this client, you should go see my wife. She does Reiki. It's amazing. You're going to love it. This is what it does. And she said, well, I'm Christian. I can't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just burst out laughing and I'm just like, I'm sorry. That's, uh, I don't mean to insult anybody, but that's, a, that's absurd. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't believe in energy. What? <laughs> Yeah. Isn't that funny? I mean, I've come across that so many times. And when I get into, when I find somebody that I can actually have a really serious conversation with about um, certain things and certain aspects, I always take them into that space, especially if they're Christian. And the fact is, it doesn't matter what religion they are, but if that's yeah. kind of the debate, um, you know, the legitimacy of spirituality and the connection to the universe and this whole energy healing bullshit, um, I talk to them about because almost every form of Christianity out there, regardless of whether it's Catholicism or Protestants or, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, they have some form of blessing or baptism or something that they go through. And yeah. obviously everybody prays too. Every religion has that connection with God where they're going to sit in prayer, whether it's in a group or on, on an individual basis. And when you start to talk to people about the feeling that they have during prayer, when they're speaking directly to God or in their mind, what they're doing is speaking directly to God or communicating with them or whatever the case may be. A lot of times they'll have strong emotional feelings associated with that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's uncommon for people to cry during prayer or during really difficult times or whatever the case may be. And they have this feeling that kind of comes over them and they get washed with that feeling of love from Christ or God or whatever it is that they call it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I have them focus in that space of like that feeling, that thing that you experience during that really religious, ex, you know, that religious practice that you have, that is energy. Like, you know, that's yeah. the love of God coming down and washing over you on a brilliant white light or whatever it is to help them understand. Yeah. Um, but that's no different than the stuff that I experience during my meditation or when I'm, you know, very mindful and aware and practicing energy and doing all of these kind of different things. It's the same experience and it's the same feeling. Yeah, it's it's the funniest thing. Like they, they're we're all talking about the same thing. I mean, yeah. they call it God, we call it the universe, or whatever. But I actually, one of my clients is Christian, and she's a very open-minded one. You know, probably exceptionally open-minded. But I mean, when I talked to her, I just I, the first session, I said, "I think you're Christian, right?" And she said, "Yeah." And I said, "Okay, so would you prefer if I called it God?" And she said, "Yeah, that that works. So no problem." I just, every time I would normally <laughs> say the universe, I just call it God because we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. You know, that's, it's, we're not talking about some, you know, bearded man up in the sky who, you know, is watching our every move and, you know, vengeful and this and that, like, that's not God. God is, it's the universe. It's just the energy and prayer is our thoughts sending out energy. Like that's, it's, it's, we're all talking about the same thing. It's just, we have different words for it. And you know, some religions, obviously, they've attached a whole bunch of other stuff to it. <laughs> Just <laughs> I'm a not little even bit. Gonna, I'm not even going to get into that. Yeah. But, I mean, when it comes to prayer and God and, you know, these things, we're all talking about the exact same thing. And that's what's so funny that that's the big cosmic joke. Everybody's gotten also bent out of shape. No, my religion's better than yours. And like we're all talking about the same thing. Like there's a reason why almost every religion is basically the same thing. <laughs> well, you could say that, you know, you could compare that as well to, cause I totally agree with you. I think everybody in the end is talking about the same thing when we talk about a higher power, or spirituality or God or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's kind of the same in that realm of online entrepreneurship and life coaching and all those kind of different things where everybody's trying to help people be better versions of themselves. Yeah. And so they're talking about <clears throat> a lot of the same topics and a lot of the same techniques and a lot of the same stuff. They just have put their own spin on it in a sense where now they, do you know what I mean? We're going to talk yeah. about this same technique. Maybe it's mindfulness or maybe it's manifestation or the law of attraction. You can get lost in that world of what life coach do I need? What online, entre you know, what, what self-help course, all those different things. Um, but I think in the end, they are just talking about the same thing. And mm -hmm. you really have to find what resonates and connects with you. Exactly. Do you help people um, find what resonates and connects with them? Because I think so many times people don't even know how to do that in a sense. They don't know how to trust their intuition and make that decision to go with this as opposed to that. 
Well, I mean, I wouldn't, uh, yeah, I would say that I, I help people clear their mind enough that they can hear their intuition. <laughs> Cause I think that's the problem is people have kind of stifled their intuition just through years of conditioning. Um, you know, not being able to trust themselves being told over and over throughout life that, you know, that they can't trust their, themselves and that they need outside validation and outside approval. So, so many people have kind of buried their intuition. So I guess I could say, I guess you could say that I help people um, sort of uncover it again through, you know, practicing meditation and through, you know, a morning routine and, um, you know, clearing the limiting beliefs. When you just kind of uncover all of, you know, take off all the bullshit, the huge layer of bullshit that's been covering their intuition, then, you know, they are able to find it. So, I mean, after a few sessions with clients, they'll often tell me, um, they'll come to me with an experience when they were able to make a decision more easily that they wouldn't have been able to make before. You know, one client came to me recently. Um, she normally, she really struggled with outsourcing. She really struggled with, you know, asking for help from people, even though she had the money to, she just really struggled to, um, to, to ask for help because she had a feeling like if I can do it myself, then it's silly to outsource it. And she, she sent me a message and said, I hired a cleaning lady and I had someone come and get the rats out of our walls. I could have done it myself, <laughs> but I was like, are you crazy? Like <laughs> you would have just, you would have been banging on the walls trying to chase the rats out. God, hire that shit out. <laughs> That's funny. Like, you don't need to be doing that. You're running a business lady. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there are things that, you know, those sh shifts that might seem un insignificant on the, on the outside, but it's a sign that they're able to trust themselves more that, you know, they're able to listen to themselves. Um, they're not worried if somebody will think that it's pretentious to hire a cleaning lady or anything like that anymore. They're listening to themselves and saying, is this something that I want to do? No. Okay. And that's really rewarding too, when they're able to find that, um, that confidence to just trust themselves. Yeah. And I think in the end, everybody needs help. Yeah. I Absolutely. That I, I honestly, for me personally, I believe that that's part of the reason why we exist on this planet and this whole big crazy thing that we call life and whatever the purpose and meaning behind it is simply that relationship between people and the interaction between people and the way that we can help people because everybody needs help and everybody benefits from help. And when we yep. help somebody, we feel better. It helps us. <laughs> yes. I mean, we're all screwed up in our own way. We all need help somehow. <laughs> And it does feel good to help other people when you, you know, when you do get somebody messaging you saying that you made their day or that something that you said helped them, that feels really damn good. It does feel good. Yeah. It's the, the, you know, that's kind of the law of the energy exchange and that whole thing where, you know, I'm sure that you find this as well when you're helping people and you have a client that you're kind of walking them through the process of whatever it is that you're helping them with. Nine times out of ten, you're probably going to glean some bit of information, even though it may be a topic or a technique or something like that that you've talked with, you know, a dozen different people about. Everybody's always different, and you're always going to mm -hmm. pick up some subtle little different change or, you know, I mean, key point that yeah. stands out in that moment that maybe didn't in the in the last moment. Oh yeah, and it's the same thing. Like when you're reading books, I mean, you can read the same personal development. You can read the same book. 20 times and get something different out of it every single time. It's the same idea. Like you're given the same information. You've seen the same information before, but you know, you, you don't always get an epiphany from the exact same information. It's like different interpretations of that information that provides the epiphany. If I can say it like that, I hope that made sense. Yeah, but like if you read a book 20 times, you might get 20 different epiphanies. For sure. And I think it's always because you're at that different point in life as well. Yeah, exactly. You're ready to accept that new information. Mm -hmm. Your vibration has risen. Yes, absolutely. So like, what do you do personally? What is your own little, what are you experimenting with in your spiritual practice? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to incorporate more of? I'm a really, really huge fan of morning routines. <laughs> I get up at 10 to 5 in the morning so that I can have a few minutes to, you know, wash my face, brush my teeth, wake up a little bit. And, you know, then I do some meditation. Um, you know, I've created some affirmations and I visualize, um, I do a bit of yoga. Uh, you know, I really take a good solid hour and, you know, sometimes that hour gets interrupted by the kids, you know, waking up too early or whatever. But, um, that's why I get up at 10 to five so that I can at least cram in some time 
um, just for me. And that has changed me as a person. <laughs> you know, I, I used to be like, I used to be in a really bitchy mood every morning that just used to be my default mood. And, um, now I, 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 I feel like a different person. I'm more patient. I'm more, more calm. Um, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a better person, really. I'm a better mom. And that, like doing yoga, I used to think that yoga was just like a workout and it wasn't really good unless you were sweating. <laughs> yeah. Like I used to feel like, you know, I don't care about the spiritual stuff. I just want to get a good workout. So, you know, I've been, you know, I've been dabbling in yoga for years, but only recently have I actually started um, experimenting with more spiritual ways of practicing yoga, you know, not just you know, doing endless downward dogs, but, you know, actually just sitting and being with myself and focusing my energy on, you know, the different chakras and intentionally directing it, uh, you know, and doing poses that aren't necessarily physically, you know, they're not poses that are going to make me sweat or anything, but they are good for me. And now I'm doing it for my vibration. I'm not doing it because I want to lose weight. I mean, that'd be nice, but I'm not, that's not why I exercise anymore. I really do yoga because I love it. <laughs> so it sounds like you're kind of doing it for the purpose that it's intended for. <laughs> it's yeah, so funny go how figure, it got right? painted, right? <laughs> I had this you know, conversation and... recently with somebody about the whole, uh, I guess, business of yoga or the whole, um, the whole yoga culture or whatever you want to call it yeah. out there where, um, you know, it has grown into that thing now where it is, you know, hot yoga or, you know, it's about sweating, it's about losing weight, it's about looking mm -hmm. better in yoga pants. And the reality is that has absolutely no basis for what yoga was originally intended for and the purpose no, behind exactly. it. It's a deep spiritual practice. Yeah, absolutely. And it's funny because there's, there's a new yoga program that came out on the market. I'm not going to name names or anything, but anyway, it's this, it's a pretty big company that came out with this yoga program and um, the, in the advertisement for it, they were like making fun of the spiritual aspect of yoga. <laughs> yoga. I was like, that's really disrespectful. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I'm just like, I don't know that I, I don't know that I like that company anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that kind of turned me off. Cause I was like, it's one thing to, you know, just do yoga for the workout. That's fine. Not everybody is ready for the spiritual aspect yet. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But to like, openly make fun of the entire reason that yoga exists. I was like, Ugh, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that. That's, that's really kind uh, of yeah, that's dissing. Some, uh, that's some bad karma. Yeah. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you? Cause I love the left brained hippie. I think it's so fun. Well, not funny in a bad way. I think it's a clever, clever name. Um, but do you find yourself completely? I know you're not completely, but are you more left brained or right brained? Well, I'm a, I'm a mixture of both. Um, I, I do consider myself very much of both. You know, I'm a very creative person and, you know, my mom always used to joke that I should have been born in, you know, in the sixties and growing up in the sixties. Cause she always did joke that I was a hippie at heart, but at the same time, you know, I definitely have an analytical side, like, okay, I do like the step by steps. You know, I like things in a logical order, so, I mean, I think the fact that I'm right brain is partly because I'm female and females just have a more of a tendency to be right brained and males have more of a tendency to be left brained. Um, so, you know, there are some women who are very much a mixture of both and they're considered more left brained because it goes against the natural tendency. Does it make sense the way I, that a way that I just explained it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I... If I had to pick a side, I guess I would say left-brained, but I am very much a creative type. I mean, I'm a musician. Um, I used to do a lot of art when I was younger. I am very much a creative type. You got to learn how to, well, I shouldn't say learn. You got to embrace it more. You got to bring more balance to that space. Yeah. And I, I do, I, I mean, I do a lot of music as well. I'm writing my album and, you know, there's, I, I do bring that in and that's one of my motivations for you know, having a successful business is it'll, it will give me more time to do music. And, uh, so that's something that I really, really am passionate about. Uh, but yeah, I really do have a passion for my business too. So <laughs> it's, um, just a question of being multi-passionate, I guess. <laughs> if you had to pin it down to one passion, what would it be? Ah, uh, see now that ah, uh, see now you're an ass. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I thought, 
I guess I'd have to say music just because it's the one that goes back the farthest. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've been singing since like before I could talk. So that is, you know, that I, um, I, I am a really good singer if I do say it so myself, but, um, so yeah, I, I'd say tell me I'd have to, you'd have to pin it down to that music. Yeah. I'd have to pin it down to music. Tell me what you feel in those moments when you're singing. Oh, just pure joy. Like I, you know, when I, I'm lucky that I work at home by myself during the day because then I can just like, when I we take a break from work, I just put some music on and just sing my heart out and I can't see the neighbors. So I don't know if they hear me or not, but <laughs> if they do, I don't care in that moment. I know I sound good. So yeah, <laughs> I just, I really, that's probably the, one of the things that raises my va- vibration the fastest. Like I put on a, a song that I love and I start singing instant boost. Hmm. See, that's the, that's the, that's the key. Like that's yeah. the whole thing. Finding that's the whole meaning of life. <laughs> yeah. The things that yep. we're passionate about, that feeling inside. And it's such a feeling. Like I tell people all the time where once you can recognize what that feeling is and you can associate it if you want with something that you're passionate about or whatever the case may be, but that feeling of pure joy and happiness and just freedom in that space, that's what you have to seek out and go after. Exactly. Yeah, all life life comes together when you when you start incorporating that feeling into your day as often as you can. That's like when the rubber hits the road. That's when all of the stuff that you've been wanting to manifest, that's you know all the stuff that you've been wanting that hasn't arrived yet. Yeah. That's how it happens. You get into that state as often as you can and like you you practically manifest things on demand when you without even trying. Like it's it's really crazy how just having fun, having more fun. It sounds so impractical to some people, but that's really what it's about. Very true. Well, I know that you're busy and you've got other things that you've got to do. And I really appreciate you taking the time for being on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It was really fun. Um, how's the best, what's the best way for everybody to reach you and find all your stuff and contact you? Uh, you can go to leftbrainedhippie.com. And actually, uh, at the time of recording of this podcast, um, the website is going to be going live. Um, I've because I've got just sort of a dummy website right up there right now. But the brand new website will be launching within the day or two. So probably by the time this airs, it will be up. Perfect. Uh, so leftbrainedhippie.com. Or um, I've got a Facebook group as well. If you're a female online entrepreneur and you want to, you know, dip into dip your toes in the pool of spirituality, then come on over and join me. Left Brain Hippies. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. Yes. And everybody go out and have a beautiful, wonderful, wonderful day. When you feel like you've discovered the meaning of life, you want to share it with people, you know, more spiritual ways of practicing yoga, you know, not just, you know, doing endless downward dogs. I literally felt like someone was massaging my third eye. Prayer is our thoughts, sending out energy.